Worship for Sunday, May the 2nd, 2021, the fifth Sunday of Easter, Year B. This Sunday's image of how the risen Christ shares his life with us is the image of the vine. Christ the vine and we the branches are alive in each other in the mystery of mutual abiding described in the Gospel and the first letter of John. Baptism makes us a part of Christ's living and self life-giving self and makes us alive with Christ's life. As the vine brings food to the branches, Christ feeds us at his table. We are sent out to bear fruit for the life of the world. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. We acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we are on the traditional land of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples who've cared for it for thousands of years. More recently, the Haldeman Proclamation of 1784 granted a tract six miles on either side of the Grand River from its source to Lake Erie to the Six Nations Haudenosaunee of the Grand River. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. In our prayers this day, we pray for Pastor Janaki Vandara and the people of St. Peter's Lutheran Church in the Preston part of Cambridge, part of the Grand River Ministry area. Pastor Janaki's final Sunday at St. Peter's is today. She is going to continue her ministry as Associate Director of Housing Services through Thresholds, Homes and, Sur and Supports, a not-for-profit group. And St. Peter's has therefore begun the call process. In our prayers, we also pray for the continuing recovery of John Husco after a double bypass surgery Friday. And we ask God's blessing upon India, overwhelmed from COVID-19. You are invited to make a financial offering to help by going online to clwr.org forward slash India. Other ways of sending your offering are on the screen and will be in the bulletin. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, for playing, and her mother, Karen Peters, for videotaping a prelude and postlude for us today, as well as the musical portions of the Communion Liturgy. And thank you to our soloist, Karen Azarot. Thank you to Tim Weber for videotaping portions of today's worship. And thank you also to our reader for this day, Josh Hyde. If you haven't yet prepared the elements such as bread and wine for communion, you might want to pause this video and make them ready now. In these challenging and unforeseeable times, if you find that you need someone to talk to or if you need any assistance, please email me or phone me at the church office and I will help you. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is so very good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with worship. As we continue our celebration of Easter, I greet you with the ancient Easter greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Children's Time. Have you ever been afraid? I'm so very glad that you're here today, and I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. Tell me something. Have you ever been afraid? Well, of course, we all have. When I was your age, I was afraid that there might be monsters under my bed. So when I got into my bed at night, I jumped the last little distance so that those monsters couldn't grab my feet as I was hopping onto my bed. And then I'd cover myself completely because I told myself that the covers would protect me from those monsters. When you're afraid, it's comforting to have mom or dad with you, isn't it? Because they love you, you know you can trust them to protect you and keep you safe. Well, we also know that God loves us, and so God will protect us and keep us safe. 
Now, that doesn't mean that bad things will never happen to us. But God's love for us does mean that God is always with us and that God will help us to deal with our problems. That's why the Bible says, perfect love casts out fear. God loves us perfectly and will always be with us to help us, so we need not be quite so afraid. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer posture. It may be hands open, facing up to receive the gift of God's presence in prayer. It may be hands folded and eyes closed to help you concentrate, or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. Now let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your perfect love of us. We thank you for your promise to always be with us. Help us to trust rather than to fear. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Your parents have children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. God's love perfected in love for one another. We love God and others because God first loved us. We cannot say we love God whom we have not seen while hating others whom we can see. Love toward God is to be matched by love toward others because the essence of God is love. A reading from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We loved because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. This sermon, Perfect Love Casts Out Fear. I remember being a student at Tate Street Public School in Cambridge when an eclipse of the sun occurred. We had been told about it beforehand, and we were warned not to look at the sun or we could go blind. When the eclipse occurred, it was beautiful, yet eerie. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, and the sun was shining, but it was dark, and there was a spooky color to the atmosphere. Even knowing that an eclipse was predicted, it was bizarre. Now imagine how it might have felt if you didn't know anything about eclipses. If you didn't know that the change was only temporary. 
it would have seemed as if the sun had been partially burned out, and we'd have feared for the future. After one such event, an expert on CBC News World said that the eclipse did indeed confuse some animals. According to him, as the moon blocked the sun, some animals actually prepared for sleep, thinking, this was an awfully short day. But at least the animals wouldn't know enough to worry about the future. You see, when we're afraid, our fear is often a result not only of what is, but also because of what might yet be. Our fear is a result not only of the immediate cause, our fear is also caused by what might yet come. An eclipse would be enough to cause anyone to fear, but added to that immediate fear is fear for the future. If we didn't know that the eclipse was temporary, with the sun partially burned out, it would get colder. We wouldn't be able to grow things. Winters would get longer and that swimming pool in the backyard would become useless. We fear the immediate change and also the future repercussions. I think that's why we fear immigrants to Canada. As we let more of them in, they bring their customs, traditions, and languages with them. And soon we fear that we'll have to become like they are. It's not really the different customs, looks, and values of immigrants that we fear. It's really the future loss of our customs, looks, and values. Otherwise, why would we care that someone else was a little different? What about inclusive language? I've begun to notice that newscasters no longer use the term pregnant woman. The new term is pregnant person because we're beginning to recognize that genders aren't really binary. That is, we're not really either male or female, but we're on a continuum. Can we begin to recognize with teenagers and young adults that gender is more fluid than previously thought? You may have noticed that my email signature contains a list of my preferred pronouns. For me, it's he, him. The pronoun they has become a new way of referring not to a group of people, but to one person in a non-gender way. Now, my mom was an English teacher and she drilled into us that they was a plural pronoun. So I wasn't very accepting of this change at first. But with time, I've come to see the wisdom in this current usage and I've embraced it, although I still slip up at times. Can we begin to see with the accepting eyes of our young people that the concept of male and female is just not as binary as we once thought? There's really nothing to fear about being accurate, except it may mean that stereotyped roles will change. And you know, that's not necessarily bad. So we fear not only the immediate change, but even more, we fear its future implications. Once this pandemic is over, we wonder what the new way of doing church will be. Once we regather, how will we feel about shaking hands or taking the wine of communion? If some of us choose to continue worshiping online, we may, not need for, we may not have need for as many church buildings or congregations. But how will we foster relationships between congregations and pastors? The Christian church is about to change, and the changes themselves would be unsettling enough. But added to our concern for the immediate change is our fear for the future. Change and fear are faith issues. Change and fear test our trust in God. One of my favorite Bible verses is, and I like it best in the King James Version, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Or in more modern and more understandable English, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries enough of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. And the reason I think it's one of my favorite verses is because I need to hear that. I do tend to worry unnecessarily about what may be. I think many of us do. And the reason for that is a feeling of powerlessness. We have very little control over the future. But the evil of the day is sufficient thereof. Christians are called to trust God. 
The future is in God's hands. Our God reigns. God is in charge. And God works to bring about a future that is often unimaginable from the limited viewpoint of our present circumstances. Former Bishop of the Anglican Church, John Bothwell, was in South Africa some years ago with Bishop Desmond Tutu. They each wanted to buy postage stamps, but because one man was black and the other white, they had to enter the post office by separate doors. Even though Bishop Bothwell had been present to make Desmond Tutu a bishop, they couldn't buy stamps together. Apartheid decreed that they should be separate. That was less than 45 years ago. And ever since apartheid ended, South Africa has had a black prime minister. Who could have foreseen such a great change in so short a time? God works, so we need not despair. God's future is often far better than we could imagine. Fear and change are faith issues. Philip Melanchthon, a dear friend of Martin Luther, was once paralyzed by his fear of the future. He had some decision to make, and he could not figure out what would be best. Not knowing the future, he was paralyzed in the present. So Philip went to Martin Luther for advice, and this is what Luther said, sin boldly, sin boldly. We don't know the future. We can't perfectly see the results of changes we make now, and so some of our decisions in the present will be wrong. But we can trust that where we are in error, God will forgive, and God will work to correct our mistakes. Perfect love casts out fear. We can't perfectly see the future, but we do know that in the future is God, and so we can trust that the future will be good. Trusting God, we need not fear the future. There's a poem I remember from a devotional booklet that goes like this. They tell of Adam, how frightened he must have been when for the first time he saw the sun disappear, ending the light of day. It was Adam's first darkness. How could he accept the night when he had never seen a dawn? After the splendor of the sun, how dark the darkness was for him, how desperate the long terror of the first fall of night, until Adam learned that day would come again, could see that there is light and order in the universe. And then Adam began to see how much light remains in the sky at night, the stars and their enduring promise of the sun, the returning star of day. Adam learned that the night is never wholly dark and that no night is endless. Even as each of us must learn it in our own time of trouble and weakness, the light is never far. The light is never far. That's God's baptismal promise to us. Baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we are baptized into God's family, into God's care, and into God's protection. If you or someone else you know is not baptized but would like to be, contact me and we'll begin that conversation. Perfect love casts out fear. The future is in God's hands and so are we. We are protected. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. May God help us to trust to trust in God's perfect love of us, to trust and not to fear the future. And the people said, Amen.
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. We bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. We pray saying, hear us, O God, and responding, your love is great. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Be with Pastor Janicki and the people of St. Peter's in Cambridge as they transition into new realities and ministries. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You have created the heavens and the earth as we wonder at the beauty of creation. May we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. In that recognition, move us to lower our carbon footprint and to care for those hurt by global climate change, especially the poor. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give leaders of the earth the assurance of your abiding presence that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Move provincial governments to act decisively and in time to prevent our hospitals from being overwhelmed. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all, including those whom we name before you. We pray for the people of India in their suffering and pain. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You call us to care for all people. As our municipal government considers the location of a new consumption and treatment site for Cambridge, create timely and caring decisions that foster the common good, save lives, and recognize your love for each and every one of us. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You are the great physician. Bless the work of all who help in providing vaccines. Keep our frontline workers safe and give them much needed rest. Move us each to do our own part in following the guidance of our public health authorities to lower the number of COVID infections and to show love for our neighbors. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit. With them may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O God, your love is great. In the sure and certain hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you thanks and praise, O God, for you have raised Jesus from the dead and swallowed up death forever. You made the world and all that is in it. You made this day, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. For this is the day your prophets testified about when you destroy the shroud of death and open the gates of salvation. 
you sent your Son, Jesus, among us, anointed with your Holy Spirit and power to preach peace and heal all who were oppressed. When he was put to death and buried, you opened the tomb and raised him on this day. Now we need never again search for him in the places of buried dreams, for he is alive and reaches out to us, walking with us and going ahead of us. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophet, and at this, the end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place. And unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now we are bold to pray.
risen Christ invites us to his table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness into our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the promise of the empty tomb, the joy of Mary in the garden, the renewed belief of Thomas, the eagerness of the disciples returning from Emmaus, the love of Peter told three times, and the peace of the risen Christ be with you this Easter, and the blessing of God be with you and all those you love this day and every day. Amen. <laughs>
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.